Hey, welcome back. Uh, you watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. And uh, if you want to know all you need to know about why the leader of the FBI admitted that he lied to the FBI and the, his entire team in the FBI, uh, don't listen to me. Listen to a guy who goes up against the feds and the FBI all the time. Criminal defense attorney Jeff Lichten joins us today. Jeff, I am just, I'm bewildered to understand that if someone wrote an article today and said John Tobacco lied to the FBI, they'd be here right now, or they'd be kicking in my door like they did to Roger Stone. Well, Why is Andrew McCabe walking around free working on CNN? Because you need to understand that eight years of Obama, in which he put all of his people into major positions in the FBI, the CIA, the Department of Justice, it's become weaponized against conservatives. And that's why a guy like Andy McCabe can lie, commit a thousand and one violation. That's the United States Code section, which criminalizes lying to a federal agent. And uh, he wouldn't go to jail. It's an easy case, but he would take a felony conviction, and his life would essentially be over. But this is what's happened now. We have leaders of the FBI. Wouldn't we have prosecutors. Would who? Would Frank or I go to jail? Frank, I'm sure, belongs in jail for any <laughs> number of reasons. Crimes against nature. I, mean, I don't want to go into them specifically because this is a family show. Uh, but, uh, of course, we, we'd all go to jail. I would be this in three seconds. But you just said he won't go to jail. He'll just, well, you know, he wouldn't go it. to jail on a, th on a first offense, 1,001 violation, unless you're going to be able to tie it to you know people dying. Uh, no one goes to jail is for the most part. Is there some diversion of assets or diversion of resources or obstruction of justice when you're the man charged with starting an investigation? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and squandering taxpayer money. Lawsuits. To, uh, I'm saying, is there restitution? Absolutely. I mean, these are the things that don't happen to leftists. The law is for conservatives. Right. It's not for liberals, and it's and it's been this way for a while. And look, Trump has done all that he can to some extent in terms of replacing judges, excuse me, appointing judges. He has not replaced enough uh, U.S. attorneys. I don't know what he's been waiting for. Maybe he'll wait until he's retired before he starts uh, appointing U.S. attorneys that are conservative. But this is what happens. These, these people, I mean, look at uh, Jim Comey. You think he hasn't committed a crime? He's oh. not concerned at all about any of this because, again, the FBI, the CIA are weaponized against conservatives. Jeff, how much of this is a conservative versus liberal thing in terms of selective prosecution, and how much of it is FBI insiders versus Inside. everybody else? Well, you know, I, I think that the uh, the FBI insiders should have been replaced. There should have been mass firings as soon as Trump came into office. And that's what happens. When Obama came into office, keep in mind that immediately he cleaned house with everybody. There were no holdovers from Bush. For some reason, Trump, who fancies himself, you know, he's the one who hires the best people, didn't do a thing. And then he's shocked when there are people that are either working in the White House, working in the Department of Justice, uh, working in the FBI, working in the CIA, that are you know, leftists, uh, Obama appointees. I've always said that's the biggest problem with the Trump administration is there are no Trump people in it. Well, <laughs> whose fault is that? Yeah, exactly. Well, he ran one of the smallest operations in presidential campaign history, so I guess he this got in, rocket with, science, in, in, in with the wrong crew. It's not I'm, rocket I'm, science. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm with you on that. Jeff, uh, I want to take, I know you're a big critic of Iran. I join you. And uh, to me, I'm looking at it as like another one bites of the dust with this guy gone, with this general gone. But I want to take a look at what uh, sec uh, Secretary Pompeo had to say and get your thoughts on the Iran situation. People should know the President Trump's decision to remove Qasem Soleimani from the battlefield saved American lives. There's no doubt about that. Uh, he was actively plotting in the region to take actions, a big action as he described it, that would have put dozens if not hundreds of American lives at risk. Uh, we know it was imminent. This was an intelligence-based uh, assessment. Uh, that drove our decision-making process. Uh, the American people also know the history of Qasem Soleimani. Uh, hundreds of American lives on his hands, too. He was involved in the Beirut bombings. So they want to send their general, one of their big generals, the number one, the, the guy who orchestrates and architects all their proxy wars with Hamas and Hezbollah and all this other stuff across the Mideast. They want to send them into Iran right to the site of the embassy attack. In Iraq. In Iraq. Yeah. And then think they can just get him to the airport and sc well, skirt him out of town. You have to understand that uh, he's had many years of Bush who wouldn't lay a finger on him. You've had eight years of Obama who appeased them. So what is he concerned about? I mean, this is a guy who is, understand this, this is not just a general, this is not just a terrorist. This is the biggest terrorist perhaps in the history of the world. 
That's how big he is. He is the number one architect for the biggest Muslim terror state in the world right now. He is responsible for the Islamic proxy terror groups in Yemen, in Syria, in Lebanon, Hezbollah. In Iraq, he's doing all the killing there. In Gaza, he's got Islamic Jihad. He's got Hamas. In Bahrain, he's causing trouble. He's killed hundreds of Americans. He's maimed thousands of them. He's attacked our allies. It's all from this one guy. So removing him, this is what's astonishing to me. When bin Laden was killed, and understand this, killing bin Laden compared to this guy was one hundredth as important. I agree. Maybe one thousandth. I, I agree with killing you. Killing Baghdadi from ISIS, it was a non-issue compared to killing Agreed. Soleimani. So the fact when bin Laden was killed, granted, conservatives, many of them hated President Obama, but they applauded because they understood, hey, the guy did something right. He took out a guy who killed 3,000 Americans. When Soleimani gets killed, you have the leftists, they're sticking up for Iran. They're sticking up for this guy. That's what's so utterly insane. Is this should be the one time this is a nonpartisan issue. This guy is responsible for gassing Syrians. He put down 1,500 of his own people in Iran just uh, last month. He is, and he would have killed many more Americans. He was on his way into Iraq, certainly to cause mayhem after what uh, happened over the weekend uh, with the embassy. I mean, this is what the guy does. He, people have been after him. Israel's been after him since 2006. He should have been taken out long ago. And here's the thing, John, that you need to remember. We have the intel and we have the capabilities to take out these cockroaches anytime we want. The problem is, is that eight years of Obama, who simply appeased, and Bush, who once he got into, into the quicksand in Iraq, decided he wasn't going to do any of this. We can do this whenever we want. For some reason, over the last 15 years, Iran has gotten the mistaken belief that they are equal to us militarily. They're not. They don't have an air force worth, worth a crap. They don't have a navy. It's a bunch of rubber dinghies. We can destroy them anytime we want. Now, Trump, to his credit, issued crushing sanctions and has destroyed them economically. But you know what? At some point, American blood is worth something, and we have to take these animals out. And that's what Trump did. I've been waiting three years for it. This guy should have been out on January 18th, 2017. He waited until now. I applaud President Trump. And look, Iran is going to certainly try to save face. They're going to try to respond in some way. But keep in mind, their people are starving. They are protesting in the streets. They are committing terrorism, as I mentioned all the countries before, all over the globe. They don't have the money anymore uh, because of the sanctions and how uh, thin they're spread. Do you really think that Iran is going to come in and say, well, we're just going to start a war with money we don't have and destroy our own country and lose our own lives? They know now that, that uh, Trump took out Soleimani. None of them are safe. What they'll do is they'll do their typical scummy terrorism. They'll try to attack targets that they think America will not respond with. Guess what? If they go too far, Trump has shown he's willing to do what no other American president was willing to do. Like move the embassy for the Israelis? You know, no, I'm just saying. That was nice that, what he did. Look, I'm just saying. Presidents say things you know years they don't do. I hear you. The embassy moving to Jerusalem, wonderful. It was window dressing, John. I'm you know what you. the problem is? Is that Netanyahu for years has been unable to really go after Hezbollah and Hamas because he never felt that Trump was behind them. Right. Trump was willing to give him words, but he wasn't willing to do anything. Now it's understood Iran is not safe, and Iran is responsible for all the terrorism in the Middle East. Well, uh, you heard it right here. That's Jeffrey Lichtman. He's going to hang around with us. He's going to come back in a few and uh, mix it up with Dan Kavalik. We're going to talk about this. We're going to be talking about impeachment and much more. You're watching Liquid Lunch Freaky Friday. Back after this.